Devil Football. I'm your co-host, Bannon Clark. Alongside me is Emily. Emily, thank you for uh, coming back on episode two. I know you had to miss episode one, but it's all good. If you guys want to follow us on Instagram, we'll put those links down in the bio, but make sure to follow our own personal Instagrams. Mine is Ben.Clark. Emily, where can they follow you on Instagram? You can follow me on uh, at Emily Seisha. Super simple. Super simple, of course. That's <laughs> what we have to do here. And speaking of super simple, we got to keep it real. We got episode two. And here we go. We got Richie Becerra, linebacker, played four years at Arizona State. Richie, how you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you guys for having me on. Yeah, we appreciate you having on, uh, having you here. So I'm going to start off with the first question, just kind of like dive into the interview. Um, so I really want to talk about kind of like what was your inspiration for getting into football, kind of like the start of your uh, football career? Okay, well, I started like as early as I can remember, probably like kindergarten. And I think I just got into it because my dad and all my uncles played. So my grandparents played. I was like, I kind of want to be like them. So I mean, they put me in it, and then it was kind of just my choices to keep going with it, keep working at it, and it was a lot of fun, so I don't have any regrets about that. That's awesome. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about, like, your high school football experience and kind of, like, what that was like and it kind of the process of getting into college football? Yeah, high school was a little bit different because I actually ended up going to two different high schools. I started my career at, uh, it was called Desert Ridge High School, and then my junior year after football season, I decided to transfer because just for reasons with the coach and playing and stuff. So I turned it to another school where my uncle was actually the defensive coordinator. And so it was a lot of fun. I got to transfer there, play with him. And then my dad ended up coaching with us. So it ended up making my senior year a lot of fun. And then from there, just working really hard and trying to get tape out. And I, my main thing was working on my grades. And that's how I was able to go to ASU because I was a walk on. So my grades were the reason that I believe that I was able to go there. That was awesome. Did you have like other offers from different colleges to go yeah, play? I go to, like Ivy League or like some small like D1 AA schools. But ASU was really close. And I just figured it'd be the best. They were going to be the best at, in yeah. Arizona. So. Plus, and, like And you said you were a walk on, correct? Yep. So la our last interview, we we had a walk on, and he kind of explained to me the off season and off season schedule. I know for walk ons, it's a really tough challenge, especially because you aren't on that full scholarship, and mm -hmm. you have to go through. You know, you're talking about your jobs, you got to talk about classes, you got film room, practices, meetings. What was that schedule like for you, and how how like difficult or was it difficult for you as a as a walk on at Arizona State? I didn't necessarily have to have a job because I had an academic scholarship, so I wasn't really too worried about that part of it but I ended up getting a job just to like pay for like housing and stuff. And so there was times where it'd be like, go to practice 6 a.m. to like 12, get on a bus, go to like the downtown campus because that's where most of my classes were. And then I get back from that at like six or seven and then go to like a job for three or four hours. <laughs> oh, so wait, I don't mean to cut you off. You said you were on the downtown campus. That's yeah, where you took, what, what was your major? I'm on the downtown campus myself. Can you say that again? Exercise and wellness. Oh, exercise and wellness. So you had to basically transport from Tebby to downtown. Like, what was it, every day pretty much? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Wow, that's insane. I mean, was there a lot of other ASU football players that were downtown rather? Because, I mean, yeah. obviously the majority of this campus is in Tempe. There was so another uh, player on my team, uh, same grade as me, and then a softball and a soccer player. So sometimes we would all just drive together, which would make it quicker than taking the bus. So that was nice, too. Oh. Well, I mean, that's really good to know. And especially, I know that you played at Arizona State for four years. Um, obviously, you talk about the walk-on. You talk about all that type of experience. How was the seasons just, just kind of leading up? Because I know that Arizona State overall record-wise, I mean, I talk about 2014. I know that you guys were basically top 15 in, okay. in a top 25 poll. And then I'm not going to say that it went kind of bad towards the end, but it slightly did, unfortunately. And mm -hmm. I know you played under Coach Graham. You never had the chance to play under Coach Herm. What was Coach Graham like as, a, as just a coach in your mind? And obviously, just how was the locker room? when you become a team that in 2014 that was really good that was insane you get a guy like coach Graham as your coach and then just kind of it progresses down I don't mean to say that in bad ways but it wasn't it didn't get that better towards the end yeah I would say he I mean he's a great guy like he definitely means the best for all his players and when we were right up there at the top he was always making sure everyone was like not thinking that we're the top dog but we got to think of us as just a team just starting out just so we don't get to uh, our head on our shoulders too bad but yeah, and then once it started to go downhill, then sometimes it would get a little bit worse. Meetings would get a little bit longer sometimes, which makes sense, but yeah. 
Well, real quickly, we do have one last segment, and Emily's going to ask her last question. We have a segment on the show called Check That Tweet, where we basically deep dive on all of our guests' Twitter pages and check out and see some old tweets. We did this last one with episode one, so we have to do it with you. We did slightly go through your Twitter right before, and this isn't a particular tweet for this episode because, you know, you do have a decent amount of content. But I feel it was so interesting. I saw a lot of trends, especially back in 2017. You took a lot of mirror photos. Like a ton. An absurd amount of mirror photos. An absurd amount of mirror photos. So I don't, I'm going to let you kind of explain that for yourself. Cause I know that we all have the trends in the social media world. And I mean, I'm a mirror pick guy. I know Emily probably is. I mean, I can't even deny that. I'm just assuming, I'm just assuming, but you want to explain yourself. Maybe just, just what was the mirror picture? Just like a big thing for you? Like, how did that really work out? I don't really know when it started, but I think just like putting them on there and then I was, had gained a little bit of weight and then I started to lose a lot of the weight. And so I was like, oh, I kind of like look a little bit better now. I kind of want to put these out there. Not even as like, because I looked that good, but just because I thought it was like motivation for myself and motivation for other people who could see it. Maybe like I lost some weight, maybe they could lose some weight, something like that. I mean, that's awesome. That's like a good way, you know, it's not too, uh, <laughs> self-centered, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then I just have like one last question. Uh, so what would be the best advice you'd give to like these D1 athletes who are pursuing uh, a professional football career? Um, one thing that I would say would just be to definitely focus on those grades because obviously everyone knows like very few people make it to that next level. And yeah. if you focus on those grades, you're going to be set for whatever you do right after college. Because I know a lot of people, a lot of my teammates that necessarily didn't focus on the grades and they were kind of lost, didn't know where to go. And then I know like a lot of my like really close friends were focused on those grades and they got, they ended up having great jobs lined up right after college. And then I have a few friends that are actually still playing in the next level, but they are definitely still set up for when they're done playing. Yeah, that's amazing. I know it's like pretty difficult because like sports is just like all consuming. You know, Mm -hmm. you said you started playing since you were like a little kid. So that's kind of like your life you know, for your young adolescence and like young adult years. So that's awesome. We appreciate that. Um, and then we just have a few uh, rapid fire questions. We kind of like to go. That's how we kind of end our show real quick. We kind of, we kind of give out some quick fire, rapid fire questions. You aren't timed. You don't have to be too pressured, but try to say these as quick as you can. We asked actually a lot of students out here from uh, especially ASU downtown, just some quick questions, basically get to know you, what you like, what you don't like. If that's good with you, we can do that. Good, I like that. All right. Question one. Favorite football team right now? New England Patriots. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Best pregame song before a football game? Ooh, uh, All the Lights. Oh, good song. Good song. <laughs> Favorite sport other than football? Basketball. Favorite artist right now? Um, Sway Lee. F- funniest teammate you ever had? Um, Will Early. Will Early. Best advice you ever received? Um, best advice I ever received was from my uh, offensive line coach my junior year of high school. He just told me that because I was an FCA with him and he was he told me that sometimes he could tell that I wouldn't be as aggressive on the field. And he just told me, you can be as aggressive on the field and be as nice as you want off the field. Good, good. That's good. Biggest pet peeve? Um, when people do that, like, finger on the chalkboard kind of thing. Ooh, I don't like Ooh. that. Oh, are you talking like when they like just like brush their fingers on the chalkboard, like yeah. like the nail, all the nails on the chalkboard? <laughs> yeah, the screeching sound. Burgers or tacos? Tacos. Best food place to go in Tempe? Oregano's. Oh, good. Really? Yeah. You can get that anywhere though. But only in Arizona. Okay, I really uh, have you ever been to Little Swish Swish one? I can't even say the name. I think I know what you're talking about, but I don't think I've been there. Okay, you have to go. It is like literally the best like Asian food ever. You can just pick out. It's amazing. I've never, I've never really been a big like Asian or like Thai food type of, I mean more sushi than anything, but I've never been like oh, a big, sushi. I've never been big with that to be honest with you. Or like <laughs> Chiba Hut. I love Chiba Hut. Oh, Chiba, Hut's, Chiba Hut's good. Chiba Hut, Chiba Hut's really good. I mean, it's like I, that's a hangover cure. That's a great sandwich. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Richie, for being on episode two. We appreciate you, my man. Make sure to go ahead and follow him on all social media. We'll be putting that down link in the bio. Richie, thank you so much for coming on the show. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for having me. Yeah, of course. Thanks so much.